Imagine, said he, a dog whose tail is at Tehran and his muzzle in London. Tread on his tail here and he will bark there. Welcome to Andrew's Story. Today we're reading from this book from 1881 and talking about the telegraph. This book is bonkers in most parts, um, but it's got some really interesting tidbits um, throughout this chapter especially. Um, it talks, for example, of when an omnibus driver in London was beheaded by a telegraph cable. The fact that local residents across the city were afraid that the telegraph pole would lead to electric lightning storms within their own houses. It talks about the buffaloes, the tigers, the bandicoots, the monkeys that played havoc when laying new cables across the globe. It talked about the struggle local communities had when new cables were introduced to their communities. For example, when they used to chop down the telegraph poles and use the wood for firewood. It also talks, and I'm not sure how true this can be, but of an example where Spanish locals used to believe that telegraph cables needed to be greased by the fat from murdered children. Despite the colonial nonsense in parts of this book, there are really interesting parts talking about some of the technical challenges that they had to overcome when laying the copper wire, copper being used even though it was a lot more expensive than iron, talking about the fact that they had to wrap these cables to protect them from animals like zoophytes, spiked back sunfish and teredo worms. It goes into detail in terms of the first undersea cable that was laid in 1850 between the UK and France. It talks about how successful that was, even if it was only for a few hours. It talks about the rumour that this was dredged up by some fishing party, and that that fishing party had really misunderstood what that was, taken a sample of what they'd found to Bologna, and tried to suggest that it was a new type of seaweed. It also talks about the first transatlantic cable that was laid in 1850. The President of the United States and the Queen of England at the time had a conversation extolling the virtues and success of this project. The laying of transatlantic cables was somewhat disrupted by the American Civil War, but by the time this book was published in 1881 there were half a dozen cables spanning the Atlantic. There were also cables between Portugal and Brazil, there were cables from Britain to India, and there were numerous cables being laid at the time, for example one from the UK down to South Africa. The importance of the telegraph carrying little packets of energy across the world can't be understated, and the chapter ends quite prophetically by saying, when a cable is once laid from San Francisco to Japan, we shall have a girdle round the world on which it will be slow work for thought to travel in 40 seconds. And then, who knows, there may come some other amazing discovery to render useless all this cobweb of wires and cables spun by man's patient skill over the surface of the globe. It's fascinating that even back then they realised the importance of information being able to be shared almost instantaneously around the world predict that there will be a future technology to replace this now seems fairly obvious when we've got radio, when we've got satellite communications etc, but at the time it was profound. It's important to note though that we still use the technology of then, now. Most of you will be watching this video probably connected to the internet through some form of copper wire. In 1881 it was really the first footsteps into the information age. The fact that you could communicate using tiny packets of energy. Today we take it for granted, but the first steps were made back then. Please do visit energystory.org where you can find a lot more information about this story as well as some useful links. Leave a comment below or get in touch with any of your questions or suggestions for future stories. And until next time, I look forward to speaking to you again.